Hello students. All right. So today we are looking at unit 11 developing selection skills. Oh, wow. Ooh, looks like this is a long unit. <laughs> Let's get started. In this unit, let me make sure my mic is working. You will use tools to select parts of an image. Then you will draw a path and turn it into a selection to turn leaves different colors. In this lesson, you'll use the free select tool to select a leaf, and then you'll change the color of the leaf. Goals for the lesson, use the free select tool to select parts of an image, make specific leaves different colors. Project introduction. In this project, we've chosen a photograph for you to practice on as you use the different selection tools. GIMP's selection tools are important. Being able to use them well will make working in GIMP much easier. Once you've completed this project, you'll be able to use these selection tools with any other photo. Get started with me now by opening up GIMP. Do it. Open it up right now. Perfect. And then file. Open. Find your image design folder and then your resources folder. And this is unit 11. Open up the leaves JPEG. Look at those drab old leaves. We're going to change all that. Let's name it. File. Save as. How do you save your files in this class? You should save your files like this in all of your classes for your teachers. Your first and last name and then leaves. Make sure that it's in your image design folder in the resources under unit 11 or wherever you save your image design art. Perfect. Free select tool. The free select tool lets you draw a selection just as you draw with the paintbrush. The shape that you draw becomes the shape of the selection. Tips for using the free select tool. With the free select tool, it may be difficult to trace complicated selection shapes. Read the tips. Tip one, use the add to current selection button to draw and connect several small selections together. This way, you don't have to select everything at once. Also, remember, when you wanna add, you just hold down the shift button. It does the same thing as add to current selection. Shift, hold down shift. Tip two, when you're drawing a selection with the free select tool and you let go of the mouse button, you can click and drag the circle at the end of the line to change the line's shape. Tip three, if there are gaps in your selection, use add to current selection with the free select tool to draw a circle around the gap. This will add to your selection. Do you remember how to subtract from a selection? What if you select too much and you need to get rid of something? What button do you hold down? Control. All right, so the free select tool, if you just hover your cursor, I know you guys know this, when you hover your cursor over it, it tells you the names. This one with the lasso is the free select. If you're in Adobe Photoshop, it's actually called the lasso tool. Um, before we use the lasso tool, what we're going to do is we're going to use the free select to select this leaf right here at the bottom. And I'm going to teach you a quick little trick. So if you grab the zoom tool, you want to make sure that it's on zoom in, um, and you just draw a little rectangle around what it is that you want to zoom in around. Check this out. Boom. That was pretty cool, huh? That was fun. I'll hit control. Oh. Control Z doesn't work on Zoom <laughs> for some reason. It works on everything else. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to click Save and do your free select tool. Select it <laughs> by clicking on it. And you're just going to go around and draw the edge of your leaf. Do that with me now. Don't worry if you don't get it perfect, we can fix it. Do your best. Don't take it too long. Just get it done. You'll be fine. Oop, I'm almost done. Are you with me? 
Are you almost done too? Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, when you get to the end where there's the little yellow circle, just click on the circle. Okay, so if you're like me, you have tons of places where you went out too far, you weren't close enough, so we gotta subtract that gray area. Remember to subtract, hold down control. So you're just gonna hold down control button on your keyboard and draw a circle around whatever it is that you wanna subtract. So while you're in the subtracting mood, just go around holding down your control button and just subtract anything that you may have accidentally gone too far outside of the boundary of the leaf on. Okay. Bonk. Are you getting in there? You always want a precise selection, and, and I like to talk to you guys about this. You know, when you go out into the world as digital artists and you're doing some work for a client, I want to make sure that you know how to be precise. So that's why I take the time to do all this with you. Okay, now there's some places where I didn't get close enough and I excluded some of the leaf's edge. So I'm going to hold down Shift now to add those areas in. That works. So this is how this marvelous tool works, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, huh, the color of the leaf is so different from the color of the background. I feel like I could use a different tool. I feel like I could use my fuzzy select tool. Let's see what happens if I grab my fuzzy select and I hold down shift and if I click over here, will it add the leaf? It does, it adds it for me. Oops, but then it added too much other stuff. Just hit Control Z. So sometimes it isn't worth it to use the, the fuzzy select because um, sometimes it'll select too much. So I'm going back to my free select and I'm just getting the rest of the edges of these leaves over here that I missed. And oh, I see some places over here where I need to use Control to subtract. I went a little too far outside the boundary of the leaf edge. Yep, a couple of places there. Perfect. Now the more precise you are with this, um, the better your end result is going to look. And it's going to actually look really beautiful. Okay, so hopefully you've got a nice precise selection now. Toggle Quick Mask. Toggle Quick Mask lets you modify a selection using the paintbrush tool. Everything outside of the selection will become a reddish color. When you toggle Quick Mask, the brush colors are limited to black and white. When you paint with the black color brush, it adds red and removes part of the selection. When you paint with the white colored brush, it removes red and adds to the selection. Okay, so I'm gonna, there's some still areas that aren't totally precise around the, the leaf edge here. So I'm going to click Save, and I'm going to get my Zoom tool. And I'm going to zoom in on this area down here and see if I can get more precise. So I'm going to draw that rectangle around that area. And now I can see, wow, look at all of that edge that I missed. So we're going to go to select toggle quick mask, which is shift Q for shortcut. Now here's the toggle quick mask and what it's doing is it's making anything outside of the selection red and um, everything inside it is technically white, I believe. I'm not sure, but anyway, it's just the regular color. So um, you want to make sure that this is black. And actually, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have any areas that are going outside of it. So I'm gonna toggle it and make it white. And I'm gonna grab a brush because the leaf part is white. And what I'm trying to do is to get this to be part of the leaf. So when I paint it white, it's gonna make that red selection go away. I know this is a little bit confusing. Um, if you were trying to get more of the red in there, you would use the black color to paint. So let's go ahead and grab a paintbrush 
and um, make sure that you have a brush selected. Right now, I don't know why, my default, I never have a brush. <laughs> you can select your brush just by clicking on that box and we're going to select the, the hard brush, the firm hardness of 100 and um, they recommend that we change the size of the brush to about four. Okay, so now that you have that, you can come over here and you can start painting and revealing more of the leaf. So what this is doing is this is actually adding to the selection. Now, if you're not sure what you're what you're actually accomplishing here, what you do is you go to select toggle quick mask and take a look at what you did. So I did end up adding a lot more of the edge of the leaf to the selection, didn't I? And I can see that there was a little bit more down there that I could have gotten. It looks great. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of zoom around and see if there's, I could probably add some more there. So I'm going to do toggle quick mask or shift Q. And I've got my white. So white means that I am adding to my selection. I'm adding to the selection of my leaf. So there we go. I've got some more of my leaf selected. And you can just kind of go around and kind of see what you're doing. Looks pretty good. So I did also want to show you um, what the other one looks like. So I'm actually going to accidentally go over into this area over here so I can show you what it looks like when you use the black. So I'm going to go select toggle quick mask and now you can see that that selection has gone way beyond the edge of the leaf. So I can switch and make black my foreground color and now when I do select toggle quick mask if I color black that's actually getting rid of that part of the selection. So this is how you subtract. Okay, so toggle quick mask. And how does that look? Looks like I went in a little bit too much over here. But I just wanted to give you an idea that that is another way that you can add to and take away from your selections, okay? So getting rid of that little edge right there. I think that's just a fantastic tool. I love that. That is fantastic. Toggle to white because I'm going to add a little bit more to the selection here. Yeah, I love that takes a minute to toggle back and forth, doesn't it? But I think in the end it's worth it. Nice, that's a cool tool. I'm gonna go ahead and do zoom. To zoom out, you just hold control. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Get back to kind of where I was before. Perfect, so that actually looks a lot sharper and more precise now, doesn't it? Adjustment layers are made from selections of the background layer. You can apply color and other changes to these layers without changing the background layer. These new layers will appear in the layers list. You can go back and edit an adjustment layer by selecting it. Next, you'll change the hue saturation of an adjustment layer. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to copy this leaf and paste it to a different layer. In order to copy it, we need to have the Move tool selected. So I'm clicking Save and selecting the Move tool. Do you remember what the shortcut for copy is? Control C. You can also go to Edit, Copy, and it shows you the shortcut there. So go ahead and do that, Control C. And then you could go Edit, 
paste as a new layer, not a new image, because that creates a whole new document. A new layer, that's one object, and when you do that, you'll notice that it'll show up over here. I'm going to delete that, because I want to show you another way to do it. You could also just say Edit Paste, which is Control V. So I'm going to hit Control V, and you'll notice when you do just simply paste it and you don't designate that you want it as a new layer, it creates a floating selection, and you can't make any changes to the other layers when you have a floating selection, okay? So if you're ever in a situation you're trying to paint or do something and nothing's working, check to see if you have a floating selection. There's a couple different ways that you can ground that. Um, you can just click right here on the create a new layer button and that makes it into a new layer. Or you can right click on it and you can go to new layer. So there's lots of ways to do that. And um, if you wanted to make that floating layer a part of the layer underneath it instead of a new layer, that's what anchor layer is. So I'm just gonna go to new layer. And now we are going to adjust the hue and saturation. So go to colors, hue saturation, and just slide the hue. And notice that you get this really awesome effect. So we're gonna go with that and um, you can increase the saturation to make it more intense. Um, I prefer that you go with more intense than less intense just for the sake of this assignment. Um, you can adjust the lightness. That's pretty fun, making it look through there. Click OK. And you can also, and I always recommend that you do this, you also can adjust the contrast. I am like the biggest advocate for contrast um, I generally don't adjust lightness in the hue and saturation box. I would rather um, see it done here when you've got contrast to balance it out. So go ahead and play around and get the awesome effect that you're looking for and click OK and save your changes. Bravo, in this lesson you made a selection with the free select tool. You changed a selection with quick mask and the paintbrush tool. You added a hue saturation layer mask to change the selection's color. Lesson two. In this lesson, you'll select leaves using the alternate free select method and the scissors select tool. And then you'll change the color of the leaves. Goals for the lesson. Use the alternate free select method to select parts of an image. Use the scissors tool to select parts of an image. Make specific leaves different colors. Alternate free select method creates a selection by drawing straight lines between points that you click rather than by clicking and dragging. You may find that this method is easier than clicking and dragging to trace a shape. The alternate free select method is useful for geometrical shapes and straight lines, but you can also create a curved line by clicking to add a lot of points. You'll use this method next. All right, so this alternate free select uh, method that they're talking about is basically using the free select tool like it's a pen tool or the paths tool. We are going to be selecting uh, this leaf right here so you can grab your zoom and draw a rectangle around that leaf to zoom in on it. Perfect. And um, you've got this line here on this pasted layer. <laughs> Let's go back and work on the original layer, okay? When you look at that pasted layer, because of the fact that that selection that you copy and pasted is not the entire size of the whole canvas, that's why you're seeing that line. So just to not have to see it, click on a different layer. <laughs> we want to be working in our leaves layer anyway, since that's what we're going to actually be copying is from this image. So grab your free select tool, and this time you're just going to click and let go. Click, let go, 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 and just do that around the entire shape of the leaf. So what this is, is these are just little straight line segments. So you wanna make sure that you're doing those clicks so that those straight lines are hugging the boundaries of your leaf as best as possible, as best as straight lines can do. 
<laughs> right. So I'm starting to get a little dizzy here and, and can't exactly see <laughs> what I'm doing. Okay. So hopefully you're doing that with me now. Are you having a ball? Look at, I am having so much fun right now. <laughs> click, click, click. Which method do you like better? Do you like this little click method? Or do you just like to draw? It seems like this is taking me longer. And when you have a curve, you know, you kind of have to work your way around that curve so that it doesn't just look like a straight line. So when you have curves, just kind of do lots of little clicks so that you can hug it with your straight lines as close as possible. This is actually kind of cool. I, I, I must admit, I did not know that you could do this with this tool. And then when you get to the end, just click your start point. So not bad, that looks pretty good. Okay, so once you've got it selected and looking pretty good, we are going to do the same thing that we did with the other one. Okay, and you know what, before we go any further, I'm gonna double click on that. I'm gonna call that leaf one, that first layer that we did. And I'm gonna click save. Remember we have to hit the move tool before we hit copy. So get on your move tool and then control. Actually make sure you're in the right layer. Get in your leaves layer. Control C, okay? And then control V. And remember we have to ground that floating selection. You can click on that little page at the bottom. Or since my RAM is used up and it won't work, right click and to new layer. Okay. Good job, and once again, we're going to grab the hue and saturation tool, and we're going to adjust and create a different hue, and you can bump up your saturation, click OK, and then adjust your brightness and contrast. So you might need to play around with the lightness too to get the effect that you're going for. Okay, and then click OK. And yours does not have to look exactly like mine, so you are free to do your own thing. Uh, let's name that layer, double click, leaf two, and hit enter. And now let's learn the scissors select tool. The scissors select tool is like the free select tool, except that it tries to sense the edge of what you're selecting based on its color. As you click along the edge of an image, the scissors tool will drop selection points and draw a selection line along the way. It works well when you have a sharp image set against a differently colored background. Let's try it. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, holding down control so I can see the next leaf that I'm going to go for. And it's going to be this one right here. To get rid of this little line, I'm just gonna click on my leaves layer, okay? And let's grab, we still have the zoom tool, um, draw a rectangle around uh, this other leaf that we're going to change the color of. Perfect, so we're nice and zoomed in on that. And now we're going to try these scissors. I'm super excited about that. So the big deal about the scissors is that supposedly they're going to actually organically hug the selection around the object. As long as it's a totally different color than the background image, it can tell what it is that we're trying to select. So I'm gonna start here at the beginning and I'm just gonna click out here, let's see. And look at that, it just like tries to hug itself right around the, the pixels. So this is the same thing where I'm just clicking and releasing. Now that one I wasn't crazy about, it didn't seem to go all the way out to the edge but I'm not complaining. <laughs> this is good for us to try this out and just to kind of see how it works. So it is kind of bleeding into my other leaf. I'm not crazy about that. Um, are you having fun? I kind of like the, the wiggly lines that it's creating. That's, that's awesome. 
some selections seem to be better than others. It's a little wonky. <laughs> it's not totally precise, I'm noticing. But that's okay. Hopefully you're almost done with me. I'm going all the way back to the beginning, okay? And then what they were saying is that you can also grab these little edges here and you can adjust uh, those locations where you put those. Um, not exactly helping too much with some of these situations. I can't get that to just hug the edge of it, but oh well, <laughs> it's good enough. So play around with that and then it says to make it a selection because you'll notice that it's not a selection yet. You have to click on the inside just like you do with your crop tool. How you have to click in the middle. So just click in the middle and then you'll notice that it becomes an active selection by the marching ants. This might be a fun place to go and do your select toggle quick mask and get your white paint and your brush and to come in here and to brush some of the areas where it wasn't totally accurate. So yeah, just brushing out the areas that are on the leaf that are red. Selection just wasn't that great. And you don't have to go totally crazy, but you know, the better your selection is, the more realistic and believable it's going to look in the end. That's the goal of manipulating photographs in this way, in a creative way, is to make it believable so that when people see it, they have to take a double take and go, what, did they really take that picture? And I'm gonna to toggle to black because I know that it was actually kind of bleeding in on this other leaf. So I wanna to get to the edge of that and make sure that I've got my boundary nice and tight on that leaf. Go back to select, toggle quick mask, and that's looking pretty good. So we're gonna do the same thing. And you know what? I think this time I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So I'm gonna hit my zoom tool and I'm going to hold down control and just zoom out because I wanna kinda see how it looks all together. So remember you have to hit your move tool. So I'm saving and hitting the move tool now I'm going to copy, control C, and now I'm going to paste, control V, creates that floating selection. You can click down here on the new page. If you don't have any RAM, just right click to new layer. Perfect. Let's double click and name that leaf three and go to colors, hue saturation, and let's change the hue to something else. Adjust your saturation, click OK. Then colors, brightness and contrast. And adjust your brightness and contrast how you want it. Click OK. And save your changes and click on your leaves layer so that you're not seeing the outline. It's starting to look really awesome. In this lesson, you use the alternate free select method, which was just clicking around the edge to make a selection. You use the scissors selection tool and you colored the leaf selections. Lesson three. In this lesson, you'll draw paths using straight and curved lines and then change them into selections to color leaves. Goals for the lesson, use the paths tool to draw a path and turn it into a selection. Make specific leaves different colors. The paths tool, drawing straight lines. The paths tool lets you draw straight lines just like the free select tool. These lines form a path. When you click once, the paths tool adds a single tiny circle called an anchor point. When you click again, in a different place, the Paths tool will draw a line between the first and second anchor points. Okay, so we are going to use the Paths tool next to color this leaf right here. So click your Zoom tool and draw a rectangle around that leaf. So 
you can zoom in and see it closely. And then this is the paths tool. And it's also called in other programs, the Bezier tool or the pen tool. But this is truly the most important selection tool that every digital artist needs to know how to use well. So you can start anywhere. Now the cool thing, you know how um, we had to click a lot with this um, free select, click, 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 click. The nice thing about the paths tool is that we don't have to click as many times. So like if you see um, basically just different points, I'm gonna start and click here first, and then I'm gonna click over at this edge, at this edge, I'm gonna click all the way down here because I see a single curve on that edge. I'm gonna actually grab and round that later. So just click from point to point and you can actually round these curves later. I can round that whole entire curve in a minute. So I'm just gonna click from that point to that point and I'll click and drag that and make that into a curve. I can do the same thing all the way from this point to here So notice how few and far between my mouse point or my mouse clicks are. Okay, and I think I can go all the way around there. And now I'm gonna end at this point right here. So I'm gonna hold down control and click on that first point okay okay so now when I was saying you can just click and drag these little curves isn't this cool to round them now the other thing that you'll notice is that these little handles show up and the handles let you you know play around with those curves to an even further extent it takes a little bit of practice to figure out how to get those curves to do what you want them to do. But you can do it. <laughs> it's actually really fun. So just grabbing that and then I need to get it so that it hugs the edge a little bit more. I absolutely love this tool because you can take any drawing that you've made and you can upload your drawing as a layer and then on a new layer, you can literally use this tool to, um, to trace your drawing and um, then color it so that it looks like, you know, graphic art, like a graphic comic book or novel. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this, taking a second to learn how this works. Takes a lot of practice. Not by any means saying that you should be an expert after you do this one time. It takes a lot of work getting proficient. But the nice thing about it is it does give you really accurate selections. All right, so that's pretty good. Now when you get to the point where you are <clears throat> ready to turn that into a selection, you go to the Pass Tool Tool Options box down here and you'll notice that it has a Selection from Path button. You can also do that in the Select menu. You can go Select from Path here. So either way works, okay? Excellent, so now you have a selection. You can go ahead and color it. Um, I'm going to zoom out again because I wanna be able to see how it looks in comparison to the whole composition. 
getting into colors, hue saturation, picking a new hue, saturating it how I want it, click OK, then brightness and contrast. and click OK. Mm, I think I might have gotten my, my recordings, uh, the timings confused. So I'm not sure um, where you were at with that, but we had our selection. Um, we got to the Move tool. We copied the selection, Control-C. We pasted it, Control-V. Um, and then we, in the Leap 4 layer, then we colorized it adjusted the brightness and contrast, We've saved our changes, and now we are back on the leaves layer. Just in case that recording didn't go through, that's kind of what I just did. The Paths tool, drawing curved lines. The Paths tool lets you draw curved lines, not just straight ones. These curved lines form a path, just as the straight ones do. When you click once, you'll see a single tiny square. Click and drag from a different place, and the Paths tool will draw a second square with direction lines coming out of it and a curved line between the two squares. One of the direction lines will follow the mouse pointer until you let go of the mouse button. Okay, so this is something that I really struggle with, <laughs> but we're going to do it, okay? So we're, let's go ahead and let's do this leaf up here. What do you say? Let's zoom in and try this guy. I think this one will work really well with what we're going to try to do with this Paths tool. I think it's probably the hardest uh, thing to do with your Paths tool is draw your curves as you go. It's really easy to go back in and adjust them the way I showed you just by clicking and dragging them. Um, but we're going to try to do it as we go. So I'm going to start here at our start point and then I'm going to go to my next point and instead of just click and release, I'm going to click and hold. And I'm actually going to just drag until that curve looks the way I want it to and then release. And now I'll click down here, but don't release. Click and drag your curve. Oh boy, that one up there is not cooperating, is it? So just, just get the edge of that one the way you want it. And you're going to have to go back in and manipulate that other one later. Go up here, click and drag. And so this is kind of like one of the challenges of using this tool is sometimes it doesn't exactly, since I can only adjust one of the handles at a time, um, it's not quite working that great. <laughs> But you can go ahead if, if, you're, if you're feeling like, you know, that curve's just not, that one worked perfectly. That one worked perfectly. This one's not working perfectly. No big deal. I'm just, you know what I'm gonna end up doing? I'm just bringing those little curves right back to the beginning. I'm just gonna end up going in. See, cause I get those, that wonky little edge there just not working out for me. That one worked nicely, but they don't all work so nicely, but that's okay. We can fix them. So it's an exercise. Do it. It's fun. I'm having a blast. Okay. And then to get back to that starting point, hold down control and click there. All right. And now let's go ahead and just adjust these curves. So to get this curve to do what I want it to do, I just have to grab that handle. And then that's going to help. And then this one, I've got to grab that handle and bring it in a little closer. Okay. So coming in later on. So that's why sometimes I feel like it's just easier to, <laughs> to adjust it later <laughs> than try to get your curves to do it you know, you want them to do right off the bat, but it's not so bad. I mean, I know I'm, I'm, I'm not talking this up. I should be using curves is the most profound way <laughs> you can impact your art. Love it. It's pretty fun. 
You just you just got to get in there and do it. I'm telling you. You just got to do it. It's fun. It doesn't look that bad. That's pretty good. It's what we were looking for. I'm just going to go ahead. I don't want to tempt fate any further than I already have. Um, and I'm going to do a selection from path. I might have to click save since my RAM is all used up. My selection. You've got to be kidding me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and color mine. <laughs> Actually, I need to copy it first, so I'm hitting the move tool. Control C, copy. Control V, paste. Right click to a new layer. Name it Leaf 5. Man, I can't believe that. Okay, hit enter. And um, now I can go ahead and colorize that. Here's my hue and saturation. Whoops, hue first. What color? E. That's so funny. Oh my word, I tell ya. Okay, saturation's good. Okay, and then colors, brightness and contrast. I guess that's a good tip. If you get to a point and your your um, GIMP is just totally unresponsive, click save, close it, and open it back up. <laughs> that just worked for me really well. Okay, go to your leaves layer. Lesson four, in this lesson, you'll use foreground select tool to select another leaf and then change its color. Goals for the lesson, use the foreground select tool to select parts of an image, make specific leaves different colors. The foreground select tool works just as the free select tool does. You can click or click and drag around an image to select it. After you draw the selection, you'll use the foreground select mask mode and the paintbrush to show GIMP what part of the selection is the foreground. GIMP will use that information to convert the mask into a selection. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and do this little leaf right here. So grab your zoom tool and draw a rectangle around that leaf to zoom in. And we are going to be using the foreground select tool. So click on that. And then just like with the other tools, uh, you're just going to kind of click, 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 click around the shape, which I don't know. I don't know what the point of this is because if we are just clicking around the shape, <laughs> if we used, um, you know, the any other tool, we could already have a selection. Oops, I went too far. Hitting, oh, this control Z, I won't undo, hit escape. See, oops, that, that already was a part of it that I wasn't too crazy about. It's using the lasso tool. Okay, so I see what's happening. It's saying that it's using lasso. So in essence, I guess I could just draw around this leaf. I don't even have to click. So I, I prefer to draw it. Okay, so I get to the start point. And then it says it puts this mask, foreground. It says mark foreground by painting on the object to extract. So down here it's kind of giving you directions what to do. So you're just gonna paint on this object, I'm assuming, yep. And I guess you just go around and paint on it. This seems like an extra step to me. <laughs> Does it not seem like an extra step to you? So I'm feeling like this probably wasn't what this tool was designed to do when there's easier ways to do this. And I can't really think of an instance off the top of my head when this would be smarter, better, faster, you know? than another method. This seems like it's taking way too long. Okay. Way too long. All right, so perfect. Okay, so now that we've done all of that, we're gonna hit enter um, for your leaf six, and I'm just gonna catch up with you, hopefully, let's see. see 
looks like I'm getting caught up to you. That's not what I selected. <laughs> well, you know something, guys. I tell you what. <laughs> Got to make sure you're in the right layer. When you go to copy it, make sure that you're in the leaves layer. Otherwise, what it did is it just copied a different layer. <laughs> okay, there. That worked. Tools. Colors, hue, saturation. This is funny. I usually try to do a really good job of showing how to do stuff on here for you. I do a good job mostly, don't I? <laughs> oh, man. I like that red. There we go. And time saturation. Click OK. All right. Save your work. Save, save, save. Very good. Go back to your leaves layer. In this lesson, you use the foreground select tool to make a selection and you colored the rest of the leaves in the image. Uh-oh. Okay, so what you're going to do then for the rest of it is just use any selection tool that you want to um, to select your leaves. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Make sure you're in the leaves layer. Of course, you, you should do a good job. Zoom in. Okay. Make sure that you get precise with your selection. Hold down control. Whoops, I'm in my zoom tool. Hey, 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 Okay. Um, get in there. Make sure that you have your uh, your lasso tool or whatever tool selected. And then um, hold down control. If you had some areas that you went outside of the leaf boundaries, And you need to hug in and get a little closer, right? And then hold down shift if you have some areas where you didn't get close enough to the leaf boundaries and you need to add these areas to your selection. Really want you guys to do a good job on this, okay? I know I run into technical difficulties too. You're not the only ones, okay? Now you're gonna hit your move. Tool, control copy, control paste, right click to new layer. All right, colors, hue, saturation. Change your hue to something awesome. Saturate it. Colors, brightness, contrast. Adjust your brightness and contrast. Click OK. Save your changes. Zoom out. I like to do image, no, view zoom fit image in window so I can see the whole thing getting so close just one two three four leaves to go you can do it I'm gonna leave you to finish those leaves on your own I know you can do it I'm sorry this is taking so long um man this assignment was a lot more intense than I thought it was gonna be oh sheesh you can do this though I'm gonna do uh that was a that was a guide yeah, let me just do it with you really quick. So grab your zoom tool, draw a rectangle around the leaf you're gonna select next. Might have zoomed in a little too much. Hold down control to zoom back out. Make sure you're in your leaves layer. Grab your whichever tool. I think the free select tool is personally the easiest of all the methods to just draw around. This is truly the sign. Wow. Miraculously silent. Very good. Hold down control to get rid of areas that you went beyond the leaves boundaries. And hold down shift to add areas that you didn't quite reach the edge of the leaves boundaries. Get that price precise selection. You can use any tool that you want. Whatever works best for you. I personally think this one's the easiest, but probably because I use it the most. So whatever was best for you. Okay, remember when you get done with the selection, you're gonna hit the Move tool, Control-C, Control-V, right-click to paste that to a new layer. Uh, I'm gonna name, I've, I haven't named some of my layers. I've got Leaf 6 unnamed, Enter. Double-click, Leaf 7 unnamed, Enter. This is leaf eight 
enter. Excellent, now I can go to colors, hue and saturation, change the hue, adjust the contrast, click OK. Brightness and contrast, bump it, whatever you like, click OK. Save, perfect, view, zoom, fit image and window, take a look, what's next? Grab your zoom tool, draw a rectangle around your next, Selection, make sure that you are in the leaves layer and select. Okay, once you get that, hold down control to get rid of areas that you went beyond the leaves borders. Get it in there nice and tight and close to the edge. And hold down shift for any areas that you need to get closer to the edge. Nice job. Pretty good. Okay, once you have it selected, you need to hit your move tool, control copy, control paste, right click, paste it to a new layer, double click, name it leaf nine, hit enter, colors, hue saturation, change your hue how you want it, change your saturation, click OK colors, brightness and contrast, adjust your brightness and contrast how you like it. Click OK. File, save, view, zoom, fit image and window. Oh my goodness, there's one leaf left. Grab your zoom tool, draw a rect, oops, don't grab a guide, draw a rectangle around that leaf. Whoops. I'm on my move tool now, control Z. This happens sometimes, you guys, it's the struggle's real. Make sure you're in your leaf layer, by the way. Okay, let's go ahead and grab the zoom tool, draw a rectangle around that leaf, perfect, and get your selection tool that you've chosen to use. Here we go. I am so excited that this is literally the last selection I have to make today. How about you? <laughs> Pull down control, get rid of any of the background that you accidentally selected. And then hold down shift to add parts of the leaf that you might have accidentally not getting close enough to the edge for right down here. There we go. Now that's a nice selection. Nice, nice. All right, we're almost done people. All right, what do we need to do? We gotta hit our move tool. Control C, Control V, right click it, paste it to the new layer, double click it, name it leaf 10. Excellent, hit enter. Colors, hue and saturation. Change the hue, what color do you want this leaf to be? Saturate it or desaturate it. Click okay. Colors, brightness, contrast. There we go, nice bright yellow. Okay, alrighty, here we go. View, zoom, fit image and window. It's perfect, it's absolutely perfect. Lovely close tight selections, gorgeous colors. Let's click on that leaves layer so we don't have that line. Click save. There is your .xcf file you're going to submit. Now file, export as, very good. Should have your first and last name and say .jpeg. It says ping, 
change it to JPG. Hit enter. Oops, cancel, cancel. Slide it over. Now click export or enter. All right, let's look at how big this file is. It says show preview and image window. Bump it to 100%. You're still below 500 kilobytes. Export it. And now it's time to submit. Click on the Dropbox. Submit both your leaves files, the XCF and JPEG. Make sure that your first and last name is at the beginning of the file name. And uh, man, 35 points possible. You tried every blasted selection tool under the sun, didn't you? Your selections are precise. You used hold shift to add more to your selections and hold control to subtract from your selections as necessary. And your colorizations are vibrant. Good job.